right, so my name's Sean Murphy, and I'm a ballet instructor. So I teach kids how to dance, how to move their bodies, and if they really listen to me for a long period of time, generally it takes about seven, eight years, if they listen really hard and really try to apply themselves, I tell them, I actually teach them how to fly. You know, what? How can you tell them why? Because dance is an art form and a sport, and an activity that you do where you are involving muscles in your body that most athletes and other sports, other uh, gymnastics, no one uses these muscles that a lot of that dancers use. So I teach you how to use those muscles to enable you to jump in the air, to look like you're flying, okay? So everyone knows what gravity is and keeps you down to the ground? Yeah. yeah. So gravity is something that you're fighting all the time. It's there, it just keeps us grounded. Well, we learn to do things to make us look like we're defining gravity. And that's by jumping and using how to use the floor and jumping and jumping and landing. Now, let me ask, by show of hands, how many, uh, how many dancers do we have? Good, mostly girls, right? A couple of boys too. Now, me being a boy, good job back uh, there. Uh, it was it was a little bit difficult uh, when I started dancing. I actually didn't start dancing until I was 18 years old. And people said there is no way that you could become a professional dancer starting at the age of 18 years old. And I looked at them and said, Well, I know in my mind what I. Can so I'm going to work my hardest and see what happens. Within four years of training as a classical dancer, I made it into one of the top ballet companies in the world. And that's located in New York City. It's called the American Ballet Theater. So after four years of training, when I say training, I was training from 9 in the morning until 9 at night almost every single day. Because that was my passion. I used to love being on stage, acting, singing, doing musicals. But when I found ballet, which wasn't until much later, obviously 18, that took all the sports I ever did. I played football, I did basketball, I did baseball, I did wrestling, swimming, tennis, everything. It was all fun, but I also loved classical music. And I fell in love with being on stage and entertaining people. I wasn't very social in school, and I moved to, to a different location where I didn't know anybody, no one knew me, and so this was the way I could express myself, being on stage, pretending to be another character. It was always easy to talk in a different accent and pretend I was doing something that no one had any idea of what I was. You know, so it was a lot of fun. But when I, when I found ballet, it combined both of those loves of, of being athletic and also being on stage. Combined them together, and it was a great experience. Now, that enabled me, after joining American Ballet Theater in New York, something I really didn't anticipate. I was able to travel the world. I was able, I was taken to different uh, countries. We were formed in theaters in anywhere from London to Greece, to Copenhagen, <laughs> and even the Far East. We uh, performed in Japan, we performed in Singapore. So a lot of different places. I got to see the world. Buenos Aires in Argentina. There's some of the pictures there for that. And um, it was a lot of fun. We had a, a great time. There was a lot of work involved, but it was really the passion that I found to do that was way greater than the effects. And a lot of it, some of the effects that you have as a dancer in any top athlete, baseball, football, are injuries. And I got a lot of injuries. I think all together I had probably seven or eight ankle injuries where I had to have surgery. So in fact, my career ending injury, I ripped the hamstring, which is the back muscle, and then I ripped another muscle, and that stopped me from dancing. But even at that point, I said, I'm not done. I didn't, I didn't listen to the doctors. Oh, you'll never dance. I knew I wanted to dance again. Well, 
I got almost there. <laughs> and then another little accident happened where I broke my ankle for the last time. And at that point, they had to put screws to hold it all together. So I teach ballet. I can point one foot. The other foot, I always have to explain, has screws in it so I can't dance. But the passion is still there. I can still teach. When I teach the kids around your age, generally it starts around 9, 10, I'll, I'll get the kids. I have to explain my foot. But I'm still able to do things. I'm still able to lift my leg and show them the things that I used to do and teach them how to fly. And they always think, gosh, when I see a kid get that ability to jump in the air and stay in the air and then jump in the air again, it just makes everything worth it. It's a really important time. Now, I'm going to go back a little bit of my history of trying to overcome different obstacles. When I first was asked to do this, I was, I was told that I gone through many adversities in my life. Adversity. Everyone know what adversity means? Difficulties, things that happen, yes? I didn't know what that really meant. So I had to search in my head, like thinking, well, I didn't really have it. I knew other people that did. But when I started thinking in, in back of my life, I was like, yeah, well, I guess maybe I did. I, I was, uh, I'll tell you a little bit of my childhood. I was, at three years old, my parents separated. At nine years old, my mother passed away. And then at 12 years old, my dad moved back in with us. He decided to move back out again. So four kids, I had two older brothers and older sister, were left to live in our house by ourselves through seventh and eighth, for me, seventh and eighth grade. As I was 12, uh, 13 and 14. I could say yes, oh, that sounds great. You want know, parents telling you to clean your room or bake your bed or do the dishes or, or fix your food and, and come to dinner and all that. It's fun for maybe a week. Then you realize no one's going to do that for you. And then you start thinking, all right, well, if no one's going to do that for me, I'm going to have to start doing it myself. So in that learning experience through all the hardships and, and uh, the difficulties of going through just what I thought was normal, I guess people would say were different adversities. So once I got into move, I moved in with my my grandmother, went to high school close to Washington D.C., and there I met someone who I really wanted to go out with. She was a girl that was really pretty, and I was like, oh, I wouldn't really want to go out. She would not give me the time of it. But she said, oh, I have to go to ballet class. Oh, I have to go to ballet class. Well, I'm like, what is this ballet class? What is this? So one day she was really upset that her teacher was yelling at her because she didn't have turnout, which is, what's turnout? Well, she did her leg, and she did her leg. Then I did my leg, and my leg went twice as much as hers. And she goes, you have to come in and do ballet. So I said, all right, well, what do I have to do? I get there, what do I have to do? I have to lift girls. <laughs> this is a partnering video of things I used to do. And this is the Royal Ballet uh, doing Swan Lake. Catching her. 
or throw up and spin a couple times and then catch it. It was a lot of fun. I really loved it. And like I said earlier, I got to see the entire world and perform in great places. But one thing about the, the careers of, of a dancer, a lot of you, oh, if you, don't, if you, if you have to go to college and do all that. Well, unfortunately, as a dancer, if you're not in a company as a professional dancer by the age of 18, you don't, you are not going to become a dancer. So that was another added thing that I was told. And I had a teacher or an instructor in my studio who is not a really nice guy. He was a great teacher, taught many, many professional dancers, but he was a little mean, and especially mean to me for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. But uh, he would often you know, come by and slap and hit and call names. And I, I'm not really sure you know, to this day really why that happened. But one time he hit me so hard while I was standing there balancing, and he slapped my stomach. It was a little bit of sweating and stuff like that. It made the loudest noise. <laughs> Everyone stopped in the room. The girls were completely freaked out because they were like, what's going on? We had a piano player who was playing, he stopped. So that time it embarrassed the teacher a little bit. I was just, didn't hurt. Just made a loud noise. <laughs> but I was not used to it. But I was like, mm, right? So soon after that, I was used to all the insults and things. The, the girls actually went in and told the owners of the studio that he wasn't being nice to me. And because of that, he actually was let go from that school. He got fired. Yeah. It was unfortunate because he was such a great teacher, but he didn't know how to teach the right way most of the time. So my goal as a teacher is to be able to teach you with the same perfection and same, uh, I still say the right thing all the time, you know, your knees are bent or whatever. I, I'll tell you what I think, but I'm not going to make you feel bad. That's one thing that I really don't want. I want to teach you how to fly. <laughs>